Hello everyone, this is Mason Haggett here from the Casino Co. Official, and today we are going to be reading Just a Story 2, Goldie and the Seven Stars, Chapter 3. Wait, I died? Narrator, Ethan S. waves as he leaves, saying that he'd be back tomorrow. Perry is seated at the table, and in front of him, and Elliot, who is still in shock, sits down too. Goldie is lying in the middle of the living room floor, asleep, dreaming about golden rum. His snoring shakes the floorboards of the house, while Franz lays some firewood in the fireplace. He then brushes the wood chunks off his bony hands from head to toe. He is completely held up by magic. Elliot only has this with one of her arms. Franz pours himself some warm tea as he offers Perry some. Perry, yes, please, I'm freezing. Franz, what type of tea would you like, lavender or orchid? Lavender, please. Franz, all right, coming right up. And what would you like, sister? Elliot, the usual? The usual. Franz, all right, bottle of ketchup it is. Narrator, then Elliot looks at Perry with her majestic red eyes. Elliot, so I think it's time we catch up. Narrator, Perry has always found Elliot's puns greatly annoying, but he has a greater tolerance for them than Charlotte's horrid puns. Elliot, it's the last time I heard that Charlotte, it's the last time I heard that Charlotte accidentally obliterated you with the glitch. Is that true? Perry, the glitch? Oh, now I remember. Dad was teaching her how to use this new ability. Elliot, yeah, she was only six. And I remember that you got caught in the crossfire of the attack. Narrator, a memory then comes to Perry as he begins to remember how he died. Memory zero, Perry. Narrator, Perry and the puppet master were walking through the halls of the true lab. The lab is dark and scary, as usual, and the puppet master strings are clipping through reality, as per usual. Perry is arguing with his father on whether or not they should teach Charlotte how to use the glitch yet. Perry, but father, Charlie is only six. The glitch is deeply physically and emotionally straining, right? Isn't that what you told me? The puppet master, my son, please calm down. I'm only trying to help her reach her full potential. After all, she already knows every magic attack that there is, and this is the last one. We might as well complete her. Perry, again, father, she's only six. The puppet master. Yeah, a six-year-old killing machine. Don't rem remember when she fought the gate guardian and almost won? Perry. Yeah, I remember. I had to save her. If it weren't for me, she died. The Puppet Master. <laughs> yeah, sure. Narrator. Perry finds it useless to argue with his father. After all, he did create the entire multiverse, so he must have some idea of what he's doing. Perry. Well, all right, father. But just remember that we're not your toys like everyone else in this multiverse. You said it yourself. We're special. You created us in your image to guard the multiverse, so please treat us like it. The Puppet Master, all right, all right, hold your horses. I would never treat you like the other puppets. In fact, you and Charlie are the only ones that I don't have complete control over. And you know that I love you two very much. Narrator, the two come to the lab window where Charlotte is waiting impatiently. The Puppet Master, better get ready, Perry. Narrator, Charlie sees them as she runs down the hall and lands in her father's arm. Daddy! The Puppet Master, Charlie, how was your day, my little angel of death? Did Mr. Pizza treat you well? Yes, he did, Daddy. He got me pizza. Oh, how predictable of him. Anyhow, ways, you know what we are doing here, right, Charlie? Charlotte, yes, Papa. I'm going to practice using my ultimate attack that you taught me last week. The Puppet Master, yes, that's a good girl. Narrator, Charlotte holds on to Perry's hand as the Puppet Master floats above the ground like he usually does, as they stand or float in front of the window, viewing the testing chamber. The Puppet Master. Now, Charlie, you do know that once they enter the testing chamber, there is no coming out until Papa says so. Got it? Charlie. Yep, yep. The Puppet Master. Okay, now, don't get yourself killed. Charlotte. Oh, trust me, I'm too good to do that. 
narrator. She says this in her usual overconfident self as she enters the testing chamber. She sees the test dummy in front of her, which will be the opponent she has to assassinate. Perry and the puppet master watch through the glass window. Perry, are you sure she's ready, father? The puppet master, nope, not at all. This is why we're doing this experiment, my son. That's great, <sighs> narrator. They watch through the window as she gets frustrated. She tries over and over, but she just can't. She falls to the floor and pounds her fists against the metal floor until they bleed. She sees. She then sees her fists bleeding. Her skin is then covered by this black liquid as she begins to float in the air. The Puppet Master. Yes, it's working! Perry, is this how it's supposed to work? Oh, this is not even the worst of it. Then, electricity begins pulsating around her as she begins to scream. The Puppet Master no clips through the wall into the testing chamber as he puts his arm on her shoulder and whispers calming words. Perry comes in and uses some of the, his green paint to calm her down too. Is she going to be all right? I have no idea. Narrator. Then a giant ball of glitches, numbers, and pure black matter comes out of her chest, destroying everything in the room. The puppet master creates a force field around himself to protect, protecting him from the glitch. But Perry wasn't so fortunate. End of memory. Perry. That's right. I remember now. I advised father against teaching Charlotte this attack, and he ignored me just for the experiment to end up a catastrophe. That brings up another question, though. How am I here now? Narrator. Franz brings Perry his tea and sits at the end of the table. Perry looks away as Elliot chugs down the, the bottle of ketchup. He always found this very disgusting and always wondered how she was able to do it. He nearly gagged every time he saw it. Friends, maybe he brought you back to life. After all, he is the puppet master, Perry. But he told me that he even he can't bring back the dead without re setting the timeline. Narrator, they sit and ponder for a second. Elliot, since he made you from his right hand, maybe he was able to bring you back to life somehow? Perry, I don't know. Let's not think about it. Our heads would explode if we tried to think about the code of this multiverse and my father. Anything interesting happened while I was dead? Elliot, a lot. The Forgotten Realm was officially established, and many people have come here. A few are Isaac Benavides, Ethan Smith, Gus Carl's Geronimo, and Cherry the Flower. Perry, is Cherry that weird flower looking outside the window? Friends, yup, Cherry the Flower. Hey, I heard that! Elliot, Charlotte became the queen of the Forgotten Realm, and Isaac became her little errand boy. Don't tell him I called him that, though. Also, he blew up her house for Christmas. B Friends, but somehow the house was back up the next morning. Perry, strange. I would ask more, but you know, the seven stars can't collect themselves. Elliot, oh, it's that time finally? Perry, yup. Friends, what are the seven stars? Narrator, then Goldie wakes up. Goldie, but Perry, I'm tired. Can we stay the night? Perry, no, Goldie, we have to go. Elliot, but Perry, there are still so many things I want to tell you. Friends, someone please tell me what the seven stars are. Cherry the flower, oh, you guys are giving a headache. Narrator, the to little talking potted flower turns around. Cherry the flower, Perry, you don't only look tired, but you sound tired too, and I can tell that you are very confused. Friends, what about me? I'm confused. Cherry the flower, so take a load off. You're going to need it for your big grand adventure ahead of you. Perry, fine, you're right, tiny flower. I'll stay for a little longer. Goldie, can you please find Brownie for me? Because I'm pretty sure that Smitty completely forgot about him. Goldie, ah, fine. Narrator, Goldie gets up off the floor and onto his legs and then walks out the door. Perry, Elliot, and Franz sit in the living room. Franz, so is anybody going to explain to me what the seven stars are? Perry, well, they are seven powerful objects that when placed on the seven pedestals in Ethan Smith's throne room, it causes the void to disappear. Elliot, and if I may ask, I know what the seven stars are, but I've never quite understood the concept of the void. Perry, truthfully, I don't quite understand it either, but do any of you understand when my sister went to the one night on the Jolly Rogers universe? Friends, she was kind of vague when telling us. 
Elliot. But Isaac wasn't. He said they were looking for someone named Derry, whoever that is. Narrator. Perry is suddenly greatly annoyed. <sighs> They're looking for me. Franz. Oh, that makes sense. Isaac just pronounced Perry's name wrong. Perry, who sent them there? Elliot, I'm pretty sure your dad did. Anyways, Franz, can you get me another bottle of ketchup? <sighs> Narrator. After the three talk some more, they begin to get tired. Elliot and Franz go to their bedrooms, and Perry sleeps on the couch. Middle of the night. Goldie. All right, I'm back with your stupid dog, Perry. Brownie. Bark! I have no idea where I am because I'm a dog! All rights reserved to Casino Cove.